up slip the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. What's going on, everybody? This is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. Check this out. I got some exciting news I want to share with everybody. This is Charles's Corner, and today I'm going to give you some insight and some information that can help you out no matter where you are and what you're doing. This is some stuff that I'm actually working on. So I like to get stuff that I'm working on, stuff that I've been through, stuff that I found out. So it's content, it's information, and it is powerful. Now, anything I do, I break down, I broke down my business, and what I found out is I needed to understand where the money was coming from, and I needed to understand marketing. Those were the things I had to do. <clears throat> Somebody's uh, trying to get in touch with me. I don't know why they always do that to me, but no big deal. The information is going to be coming. The information is going to come. So the thing I want to talk about today, uh, you know, I always speak on business credit. You know, no matter, that's where the money, you know, I talk about the money piece of it. The business credit piece is just so, it's so huge that everybody is actually going through it. So it doesn't matter, you know, where you are. It's like, okay, business credit is going to be a piece of what what you do in your world of worlds. So when I say business credit, I'm talking about getting funded, just using your EIN. So any business you have, we need to set it up the right way. And the right way is, you know, to build your business credit. Because at some point you're going to need, uh, some funding. You're definitely going to need funding. Uh, so what I'm bringing up today, I'm going to bring up government contracts, anybody that's doing assisted living, anybody that's doing real estate, <coughs> if you're into commercial, uh, if you're working with veterans, I'm going to be speaking on that. And I'm I'm not going to, like, draw it out or anything. I'm just going to get straight to the point and discuss some of the things that uh, you can do with uh, with the funding that's out there. So I'm going to give you a little piece of what I'm doing, and then it's going to tie into what I'm talking about. There's a couple of different projects I'm working working on right now. One of them is I sit on the board for a nonprofit, and we're actually working on helping out homeless veteran, veterans, and we're going to be doing containers, and we're going to be doing uh, affordable homes for veterans. So I have my own nonprofit as well, and I work with veterans, uh, housing veterans. I have uh, one house that I'm working on right now. It's a five-bedroom. I'm going to turn it into a six-bedroom and going to put some veterans in there to, uh, you know, you help veterans. I don't care if you have, like, mental health folks come in, substance abuse folks come in. The other thing I'm working on is hotels. So it's a hotel out in Oklahoma. That's a 97-unit hotel, and we're going to be working on getting veterans off the street and into that uh, hotel where we're going to have a two-phase program. One of them is short-term, meaning, well, short-term in a sense, four to ten months, and then we're going to have another program where it's going to be a permanent stay. So we're going to do some transitional housing and get them the necessary uh, people that they need to get in contact with, whether it be jobs, whether it's transportation, where they have to go, substance abuse, mental health, all that stuff, uh, working on their PTSD and things of that nature. And then the second phase is permanent housing when they tend to graduate from that program. So if you are a nonprofit, and when I say nonprofit, I mean having the check in the box from the IRS, having a letter from the IRS, and I don't want to get the number mixed up, but it's a number in the bottom right-hand corner, that the IRS will send, and it will say, and that that's a four-digit number, 
and then the IRS letter is going to state that you are approved to be a nonprofit in a sense that you are tax exempt. That's the letter. That lets me know that you are a nonprofit. Some people out there, they call themselves nonprofits, but they don't have the letter, but they're doing the work of a nonprofit. So all you have to do is, not all you have to do, but you have to submit the paperwork so you can be recognized as a nonprofit. So there's different organizations out there, uh, agencies. There's a HUD, the Housing and Urban Development. Then there's other agencies that will help you out. A lot of them want, if they're going to help you out, even business owners, for you to have a nonprofit because they actually write that stuff off. So what's happening with the 97 unit out there in Oklahoma is we're getting agencies to come in and help out to uh, one agent, one one business owner is a roofer. So they're, he's coming to fix the roof, but he's doing some uh, he's doing some uh, putting his putting his business out there on behalf of the of my nonprofit, for one, to help out and for people to donate to him so he can go in and do the roofing because it still costs no matter what you do. You know, you got to pay for this stuff. So with the 97 unit that's out there, what we have to do is we have and we have to get the different units up to speed and make them uh, ready for use, put it that way. So we're doing a two-phase out there. Then the other thing we're going to do out there is we're going to be building. And and I'm taking this somewhere so you can see what I'm doing. And, and, you know, other people can do this as well. Uh, And not just in the veteran world, but in the assisted living world as well. So the government has programs out there that are are used to help uh, veterans out. So they'll send out a thing called an RFP. Romeo Foxtrot Papa, <laughs> that's some military stuff. Romeo Foxtrot Papa or RFP, and it's a request for a proposal. Well, first, before they send that, they'll send like a thing called a solicitation, and that's allowing people to get ready for the RFP. So it's like, hey, I'm about to send it, so it kind of gives you a heads up, and it may be a month or two in advance. So they send out the solicitation to let you know that they're going to be looking in a specific area for maybe nine to 20 to, uh, beds to house veterans. When you see it come up, you look at the different areas and say, oh, there's one right there in this particular area. We want to get it. So if you want to get it, there is a different ways to do it. One way is for-profit. And that's when you have, you know, you already have, if you don't know what SAM is, go to SAM.gov and uh, get information on that. But you, you you signed up with the government to say you want to work with them, and you see the contracts, because those contracts are like three to five years. You just have to be prepared when they give you the contract to say, you know, we can fulfill this this uh, this contract. So HUD puts out a thing called a VASH a uh, voucher, V-A-S-H is Victor Alpha Sierra Hotel voucher, and they give those to the different uh, veterans that's out there, and that's for housing and things of that nature. So we use those and uh, to allow us to help out veterans. Now, this can be into, a, like if you have a five-bedroom home, it can be used there. It can be used in an apartment building to where, you know, some of them say they want 20 units. So what they'll give out uh, is it's a I, put, I, I think I messed up the thing I put a hundred and fifty dollars per day but it's really really a hundred and ten dollars per day and I know that that price may move a little bit but you know it's neither here nor there but they'll give a hundred and fifty hundred and thirty let me show it's a I'm trying to just remember off top just because uh, I'm just like that a hundred and ten dollars per day per veteran. So give you a quick example, the house I'm working on in Portsmouth, Virginia, let's just say it's $110 per person times 10 people, so that's $1,100 per day times 30 days because it's in a month. So that house will bring in $33,000 per month. So being that it's $33,000 per month, you almost say half of that is expenses because you have to pay for somebody to be here 24 hours a day, you're paying for, and, and the one that I'm doing, you know, I'm getting a chef, I'm getting, you know, a maid, 
I'm getting uh, vehicles so they can use, you know, so they can get driven around and things like that. So it's going to be uh, spare, not really spare no expense, but you want quality living uh, to help help the veterans out. And before you start, you know, looking at the numbers, like thirty-three thousand dollars a month times twelve, three hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars times a five-year contract. That's almost two million dollars. So the bigger goal is to what do you have in your plan, and what can you give the government to let them know that you can fulfill this need. So that's what it comes down to. And a lot of people looking at the funding part, but I'm saying let's look at, oh, how are we going to help these folks out? So there's some concentrated areas out there uh, that the government likes to go to, not really likes to go to, but they have a lot of veterans, uh, high concentration of veterans out there. So I know California is one of them. They have some stuff in North Carolina. They have some stuff in Tennessee. Uh, it's just different areas, and what I do is I just track this stuff, really. That's all I do. I track it and see, you know, what they're looking for, see when the solicitation comes out, see when the bids come out, see when you have to submit paperwork and everything like that. So a lot of different rules to it. I'm just kind of giving you all the overview, and I say go in and do some research yourself. Always do that. Don't just take, you know, my word or anybody else's word for it. So a big piece that a lot of people missing is the government contracting part of it. So you need to have, and I know I have a, a, a government contracting checklist. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to put that out on social media at some point. So it's, I'm going to give you all some, like I have a checklist that I use when doing government contracting so people can have a better understanding of, you know, you have to get set up. People want to get a part of this, but they're not even set up for the government contracting part of it. So, my biggest thing is having a business plan. It's just a working plan to say, this is what we're doing. That's it. You know, you got to have that as you move forward. You don't need any, anybody to do it for you. You got to put something on paper, you know, whatever, however that's going to look. You got to put something on paper just to say, this is what we're doing. And and I, lo- I know a lot of people want to hire people to do it. And I say, if you hire them, they're going to ask you questions that you could have wrote down already. So you might as well just do your initial you know, put it on paper just to say, this is what we have, this is my ideas on paper. Now you take that and you massage it and make it into a business plan, and that's what you want to do. So you can talk to other businesses that's doing it. You may not find a lot, but what you can find is if there's a contract out there and somebody gets the contract, obviously they have the approval, so they kind of know what to do, so you can actually contact them. That's one way to do it. Always do that. So you can get some education by going to a thing called a Procurement Technical Assistance Center. They're all across the country. You have local chapters all across the country. It's free information. A lot of people, they're underutilized because, you know, anything that we have to do that we got to go get some documentation and research and sit in meetings for, a lot of people are not going to do it. And I don't like doing it. I've done it. I still do it. I don't really like doing it. I'm just being honest, straight up. So there's veteran training programs that are out there. There's small business development centers that are out there. They call SBDCs that are out there, Sierra, Bravo, Delta, Sierra, SBDCs. You have to have an entity, whatever entity you're going to put together with an EIN, and then you're going to register your company name and everything like that. So that's a piece of what you must do. Another thing you're going to do is you're going to have to register, and that's for your small business administration. You're going to register. You're going to register on stand.gov. That's a piece of it. Then you're going to determine what your small business classification is. So, you know, for me, I'm a veteran. I have the small – I have the S. There's so many different acronyms out there, and I don't want to – I'm not going to go through the acronyms because I'd be to mess you all up and, and trying to figure it out. So there's a center, because me, me being a veteran, I'm going to get all the vet certifications anyway. So there's a center center for veterans enterprise out there where you can look at uh, being a state contractor for the, uh, your state living on your website. There's local government websites out there. There's general service administration sites out there. And basically you can get on their, their schedule to see what you can do and work with them. 
There's such a thing called Dun and Bradstreet that a lot of people, business owners, don't even know about. And if you are a business owner, you need, need, need to be on Dun and Bradstreet. It's just, you know, to me, it's second, second nature when you're going through business. So there's a lot of research that's involved with this. And when I say researching, I'm talking about researching government and prime contractors to target them and finding out which agencies and companies are more likely to buy different products and services that you offer. <clears throat> a lot of people don't do that. There's a thing called the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. That 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 office right there is underutilized as well. So there's documentation upon documentation, and I went through all of this, and I'm probably going to go through it again because I want to create a new business specifically what I'm doing on my on my part. I've done one for my nonprofit, but I want to exclude my nonprofit and do one as a not-for-profit as well because I want to be able to, and I'll bring this up to the reason why I'm doing it. There is $110 per day per person, and then the, on, the, on the other side, uh, if I do it through my nonprofit, there's one that's $69 per day where you can get grants. Uh, it's $69 per day per veteran. So with the same scenario, $69 at, for 10 vets per day, uh, and I use 30 days, that's $20,700 in a sense per month that they will give you to help veterans. So it's just information, y'all. Really want you to go do your homework. The best thing you can do is network like crazy. You need to know where your target market is, who you're working with, who who does everything, really. Go sit in some meetings, just like me. And I know everybody wants a cookie cutter. Well, how do, this one lady was like, can you set me through it? And I'm just like, uh, do you have about two or three weeks or a month for me to get you this information? And, I mean, I'm being honest with people to be like, it's not something that I'm about to just, hey, click here and you're good to go. That's not how it works, family. That's definitely not how it works. Uh, you still will have to do a proposal. If you've never done a proposal, that's research in and of itself. I have, a, I can have a whole class on just proposals alone. So, you know, a lot of people want to get information and get in there and help veterans, and I get it, but if you want to get at and, you know, the the money to help the veterans, that's, you know, where we should be getting the funding. You have to go through and do the due diligence. And a lot of people don't want to do it. You know, it is what it is. It's information. A lot of people don't want to do it only because it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. But once you put the right information down and you put down and you start working towards it, you uh, you just come out better. You know, that's all. I have all this stuff documented, so it's no, you don't have to, uh, that's if you want to. You can just research stuff that I talked about, and you can figure it out just like I figured it out. It took me some time. I would say, if I had to give it a couple of months, I'd say hmm, maybe five or six months, really. But, I mean, I still go to these doggone meetings, which I don't want to go to. So it's all, it's like continuous learning. And getting you know qualified and different uh, different things just so you can in a sense separate yourself so you can get these types of contracts that are out there. So I have one that I do with my nonprofit with homeless veterans. I have one that I do as a consultant that I have these different certifications from being uh, multi certi- you know certification, service disabled, veteran owned cert- certification. I have all these different certs that I use to get uh, access to contracts. So that's kind of like it in a nutshell, and I don't want to go too far in because I'm going to lose a lot of people. And I would tell you if I had to start over, this is where I would do it. This is just kind of give you a snapshot. Uh, I would start a nonprofit for one. I would start another business and get that business set up to where you can get government funding. So I'm looking at a two-pronged approach because there's different funding for different non for people who are nonprofits and for profits. What's better? I have no clue. All I know is some things nonprofits can do and get access to that for profits can't, and some things you may want to do for profit. It, I mean, it's you pick it, 
and then go down that direction. But if you have both of them, I think you'll just be better off. That's just me, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to belabor the point. I just wanted to give you all some general information. I'm going to keep this short. I really have to go put a contract. I'm submitting a contract for a 12 unit, uh, and I really I gotta I gotta print it out again. I'm submitting a contract for a 12 unit uh, apartment building, and I submitted it, but I have to make a few changes. <laughs> no big deal. So what I'm gonna do right there, I'm going to stop it right there and change one thing on my contract, and then go from there. It's kind of a, I didn't get set up the way I should be set up, no big deal. So for anybody who needs information, I'm at charlesmspeaks at yahoo.com. That's Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S, or the M, speaks, S-P-E-A-K-S, at yahoo.com. I'm all over social media. Inbox me, get in touch with me from LinkedIn, Facebook, IG, I don't do much on Twitter, but, you know, I, I, I'm still there. So uh, to start out, just to give you a quick summary, understand that there's funding out there on the government side, and all of us should be having some some sense of what's out there for our businesses. Uh, even our nonprofits, there's funding out there. We just have to go find out where to look. You know, you got to get in the books, get in the weeds, family. We have to get in the weeds and start understanding what we have access to. Right now, there's over $500 billion. Let me see. I think it's $500 billion out there, which is crazy. There's a lot of money out there for government contracts. So we just uh, have to put our name in the hat and say we want a piece of that funding. That's all. I know it, it's just going through the steps. But there's free resources, and I named some. Okay, I hope y'all can go get those. There's a, a lot of grant money out there. A lot of people want it for their own businesses, and I'm like, uh, it's it's I'm not it's not impossible to get grant money, you know, for your business. You have to know where to look. You, I mean, you got you have to put the research in. Even if you hire somebody that does grants, you have to have your business set up first. Don't have them out there just looking, you know. It's, it just takes longer if they're a grant writer to just be looking all over the place. It should be more focused on, you know, your end goal, really. So right now there's $500 billion, probably $600 billion in grant money out there. So it's, it's, it's up to you to go find it. You know, go look for it. Go put your, put, put your hat in the put your bid out there so you can uh, get a piece of it. So that's what I'm going to leave you with. I must... Uh, promenade on and go submit this dog on contract <laughs> which uh, and then I have to go do a uh, I'm teaching some real estate tonight. I just get people on different sides of the water hour away, sometimes it's 20 minutes away and I teach uh, really, we just get together and we talk real estate nothing wrong with that. Let's go get it alright uh, I want to say thank you to Miss Kimmy in Elation Magazine and in Elation Radio and whatever Elation is going to do, you know, in these endeavors as we move forward. Uh, I know, Miss Kimmy, uh, I'm praying for you and everybody else that's out there that's uh, working through everything that we go through. And I, I know people are praying for me as well. And I want to say thank you up front, up close and in person, you know. Uh, I know we have some stuff set up for Elation coming up the end of this year. And it's going to be amazing, just like everything we do. It's going to be amazing just getting in touch with everybody. And that's why I want to just pray us out. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you right now to bless everybody as we go through trying times in this life. And I pray for everybody's strength, unity, and empowerment. And I know people feel like they're, everything is not coming fast enough. People are frustrated. People just believe that it may not happen. But, dear Father, we know that everything happens in your time. And I know you'll provide the strength that we need and everything that we go through and everything happens in your time. We know that you're all-knowing and we must believe in, in trust in you. And I know that we get weak and we must continue to keep the faith in trying time. In trying time. And I pray for everybody's strength. I pray for everybody's wisdom. And I pray and know, I want everybody to know that joy comes in the morning. In your name I pray. This is Charles McCutcheon. 
I'm your favorite entrepreneur. I'm hungry. I can't stop because I have a, a huge, 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 huge network of people just looking for information that, you know, I'm just providing content. So I want to say, everybody, God bless you until next time. Take it easy. Thank you for coming on Charles of Four. Shout out D on the track. Paint Music Media. Shout out DJ Lee Productions. And I'm Al Ken. But if you a game changer, get my Let's head go. My grind don't hide. We ain't losing trout. I'ma ride till I die. I go hard in that lane. My God is the aim. Put me in, coach. And watch me change the game. Cause I'm a game changer. 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 I'm full court press. I pledge allegiance to the best. Ain't nothing left to give it that reverence that the father gets. So every day I work the sweat can get a flesh another rest. They say go hard or go home. I say just do whatever's best. It's evident I'm blessed and I work like it. Fight, fight like a Viking. Fight, fight like a lichen. The difference is I like it so I shine like I'm lightning. So I'm going head to head with something death. Who you liking? <laughs> yeah. So it's time for coach to put me in. I'm strapping on my shoulder pads, lacing up my cleats, and then I'm gone with the wind. Like I'm gone in 60 seconds, you can't hold me, you can't check me. Check the memo, check the message running through. Like, like I'm bad as I'm trucking, whoever's standing in my way. Ain't, ain't no way you gon' stop me, you better run to let me in. Cause I go hard, even though they say no way that I could win. Like I'm Brett Ford, I'ma ride this game, my head is in the sky. My grind don't hide, we ain't losing drought. I'ma ride till I die. To life, a different way to play the lane. Now my rushing yards just got rocketing. Now I'm so insane. For the kingdom building, now my shot it cannot be contained. So I'm going pray for change for myself and then what I can. I don't need no euros or no pesos or no money grams. Shout out to Wado, cause I know that he gon' play this fam. The FCA sports camp, game changer, summer jam. I don't need a hundred grand to tell him that they need the lamb. It's heaven, it's just who I am. Al Cam, this what I stand. Trap to turn around, get back in it. Never, never that, that fucking same. It's ever did your butt they chain. Like I'm Jack Johnson, the same year he changed his name. So I sacrifice my life for the cause just to win. And if you a game changer, let me see my you represent. My grind don't hide. We ain't losing drought. I'm a ride till I die. I go hard in that lane. My God is the aim. Put me in, coach. And watch me change the game. Cause I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer, 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 I'm a game changer. Now put me in, coach, 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 I'm a go hard, I'm a go hard, I'm a I'm a go hard. I'm a game changer. 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 I'm a